Hi, it's Kim, and welcome. It's cleanup time. I'm just remembering how this sedum looked in the early spring, March and April. It's so pretty and tiny and real tight growing. The buds are just gorgeous. This is sedum coral carpet that I'm showing you right here. I just love those little dangling buds. But then, of course, as the spring goes through, it blooms, it looks pretty. But now we have July, where it's over, they're dried up, they're done, and then you've got a, a chore time, basically, where you've got to come out and clean it. So even though I've put it off for a couple weeks here and should have gotten it done, this morning I am going to get that done, and I just thought I'd show you what I uh, went through here in getting all this cleaned out. Now, here, this uh, particular location is in the front of the house, and I have beds of the sedum coral carpet and sedum sexangular growing around, and it just kind of blankets. It grows very, very easily. All these tiny little pieces you see that I pull out, they will grow again. You can put them anywhere, and they'll just take root and grow. They're so pretty in the springtime. A little thick mat of tiny beads on the ground really look nice. And then, of course, they get bigger. Buds are gorgeous. The flowers are even pretty. But when they get dried out and look like this, it's time to start cleaning them out. And I don't take any time, any trouble. I just get in there, get brutal, and just take the shears and shear them off. There, you don't really have to worry about it because what's left over in there, the little tiny uh, little leaf buds that look like that will just re-sprout and grow next spring, no problem. Now, I do have a big large weed bucket that I've put back in there to uh, take all my cuttings and discards, and those I can put into another bed. For instance, that's how I've seeded my hillside bed and got it to growing in all that area. But um, it's a little bit harder to get back in amongst my boulders and trim the tops out, but it can be done. But you can just pick this up, trim it off, pull it, shear it back. In fact, mine is kind of creeping over the sidewalk, as you can see, and I don't want it to block the sidewalk. There is a, a little exit spot there where the um, we've got the kind of the drain, uh, gutter drain, buried right there so it will go away from the side of the house because that's where the basement is. Now I do in uh, wetter times sometimes see my little resident toad because he lives in all this um, sedum and in that little uh, outlet pipe but I only see him a little bit and it's been so hot and dry lately I don't expect to see him anytime soon because he's probably way down hiding someplace safe. But I am gonna scrape all that soil off the sidewalk, clean it out of the cracks, and then I can take this and sprinkle this whole bushel basket here. I can sprinkle it back into some areas around the, around the barn and in areas where I don't mind some of this seed I'm just growing. Now you can just pull it up, pull it out, because don't worry, you will have more growing in that spot next year. You'd have to just religiously take them, pull them out repeatedly all through the year to get them to stop growing there. Now it's not really an annoyance. I don't really have any problem with this plant and the way it grows, but I, and it is easy to plant someplace else. In fact, in this area, in between the hypertufa planters, I think I'm going to pull out a lot of that because I, I just don't want it to escape and go around into the inner area of the flower bed because that's where the, the let's see, it's called a weeping cherry is back there and some geraniums. Now, I didn't move the camera, but I'm behind in the flower bed now, going in there to pull the um, 
not pull, but to trim the geraniums and get them all nice and tidy because we'll get some rebloom on the geraniums as long as you keep them deadheaded. Their little strands keep growing and keep spreading, but you can keep them nicer and tighter little bushes if you keep them trimmed off. So that's what I'm doing behind there where well, you can just see my feet and hands right now. Now I um, did not have anyone to help me trim, so that's why I've got my camera up on a one of those little tripods that I sat down on the ground and uh, let film me as best I could. But it has worked out real nice for this video, I think. And you can see how much better that the plants look right there just where I've trimmed them. Now let me come back out of the flower bed and what we'll do is move the tripod and I'll show you another sedum that's growing inside of this bowl hypertufa. Now that's the sedum sexangulaire. It blooms in kind of a, a yellow stem that goes upright. The little um, stem of the sexangulaire, it kind of spirals in a little six-sided um, stem and the flowers bloom along that and they're kind of a sunny bright yellow. You can see them blooming there in the foreground by my feet and their little stems turning brown there. But I just go in there with shears, shear them off, just give them a good haircut and they'll tighten up and look a lot better because um, I, you could go individually and trim each one but I have a lot of pots and a lot of that stuff growing and so I just do it quickly and easily and eventually the little brown stems that are left over just will die out and drop down and decompose into the tufa pot itself. So it's a, kind of an easy maintenance, it's just something you put off. And I decided on this early morning to get out there and get that stuff done. Now I'm trimming this down, but I think I'll pull up a lot of it because you can see my Sempervivum, the hens and chicks that are there, they need a little bit more room. I haven't decided if I'm gonna try to pull the hens and chicks off and plant them in other areas because I really like how they've spread. And I don't know if I am going to allow that geranium to get any bigger because it's gotten pretty big so far. It does need to be deadheaded out here in front too. And if I'm not mistaken, this one that's out front is the big root geranium and it blooms in kind of a, a purplish lilac tone. Now here in this hypertufa planter is the sedum emigrantian. I love that sedum. It has nice big tall flower stems that stand up so it's real easy to trim. You just get a hold of that uh, brown stick that's left after they're finished and can just pull them right off, pop them right off, and they're gone and ready to spread and grow. I think the little emigrantian almost looks like a rosette of a sempervivum. Maybe that's why I like them so much. But the, um, they're real easy to clip. Again, I don't take a lot of fuss and muss with it. Just trim them off with shears. And then a lot of times I try to kind of uh, remove the things that are hanging over the side. They can be pretty hanging over the side, but I just don't want them to thin out in the trough itself. I'd rather keep them nice and tight. And you can see how much better that looks. And the um, bowl too. Now that is the big root there in front and the blushing turtle there in back. And they are really spreading real well. 
you can see how the little, they're called cranes bill because those little seed pods that are left over have little stems coming out there that look like the bill of a, tr of a crane. And so that's where they get a common name that's called cranes bill. But these are real easy to cut back to and they can maintain a kind of a tight little bushy bush through the rest of the summer and they bloom every now and then. Easy to trim. Again, you can be gentler with yours or just kind of trim with a heavy hand as I do, but it doesn't hurt them. They just keep coming back looking better than ever. In fact, that blushing turtle is one that has really spread a whole lot. I have a post on here why I first planted that. So I'll link it up at the top so you can watch that post or YouTube video if you'd like. And this little tiny bowl that's almost engulfed here in the front, that one is the immigruntion also. So it's looking really good. Now that's kind of an uh, overhead view of all those. Over to this side is another bunch of the uh, coral carpet. And you can see that is, maybe it's not quite as old as the one in the front, um, but that is where it's still got a tiny bit of its white flower look. But it's time to trim that too. And since I'm out here this morning, I'm gonna get that all done. Oh, there's some of my hens and chicks. Some of the hens have started to bloom, sending up their tall stalk. They'll die, but we'll get a lot more flowers and chicks out of the rest of them. So I'm just gonna hold these, um, seed them by the top, trim them off just like I do the rest of them. And get rid of them, trim them back to a nice tight little core of plants there. And I don't think you can see my um, weed basket, but I do have the weed basket behind me that I'm gathering them all in so I can scatter them. Now, I won't scatter everything. I'd have that growing out to the top of the fence line. Oh, there in the top is a, the immigration flower, if you can see it real pretty bright deep yellow and comes up on a little stalk and then fans out like a flower. Um, I'm sorry, a fountain, but it's real cute. Very, very pretty plant. That's what this one looked like to start with. Little tight flowers and buds that I showed you in the front of this video, but looks really good. Now we're going to get this finished up real soon. It's early morning, but probably around 8.30 about this time. I have to do the front of the house in the early morning because the sun comes up in back. It's a lot cooler out here in front when you can um, do your work in the coolness of the morning. That's the better time to do it. So that's how I'm operating this morning. And I do plan once this is done, I've got to go over and weed the hillside too, because we've got a lot of weeds growing in there. I think I noticed some pokeweed and I'm gonna go over and attack that and get that done. So only one more trough back here and I think I will be finished. Not too much left. And that little sprig that's growing, I shouldn't, but I guess I'll let him stay and keep growing. So let's take an overall look and look at all the pots and see what we've accomplished this morning. It's only taken me about an hour to get this done, but everything looks much, much better and all that dried dead stuff is gone. Looks much better. So, oh, we'll wait for the little hens and chicks to flower, and then we'll have some more there, I hope. But thanks for joining me today, and be sure and stick around and watch more videos.